Have you guys ever had malaria? What's malaria? Did you say what's malaria? Yeah. Like for you, for you, you don't know what malaria is. No. Have you ever had malaria? No. Ah, baba. One day, Nigeria will also be there, where malaria will become a thing of history. So, but you have mosquitoes here in America. Oh yeah, but there's some people that actually think malaria doesn't exist. Uh, some people believe malaria does not exist. Yeah. They think it's a conspiracy. conspiracy? Yeah. Jesus. Because they've never experienced it. So you can have mosquitoes but not have malaria because you can treat malaria as a country, right? Mm. Like, you, you know we're shooting, right? You're shooting? Yeah. I always tell you, tell me ahead of time. Where's my phone? Malaria doesn't exist, it's a conspiracy. Coming up in this episode, a Nigerian agency would like to spend $200 million on mosquito net. Also, find out why the Nigerian government is selling brass and western. <laughs> Again. Find out why the Nigerian government is now selling bras and waist trainers. That, I have to laugh which time I say it. In Congo, a boat capsized has led to 60 deaths. In Ethiopia, several airstrikes were launched into the Tigrayan capital. In Sudan, a coup d'etat has put the military in charge. And then, of course, it was Zambian Independence Day last week. Don't forget to click the timestamp in the description below in order to go to the story that you would like to listen to. And if you're yet to subscribe to our channel, we're watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Call it the wall, roll the camera. What's up, people? It's your girl, Adiola. Are you running for president? Seeing my leadership style, quality, uniting the people. Are you all right? I, no, 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 Where are you running to? Come back, come back here. Are you okay? Is everything right here? Why are you doing this to me? Why do you like to ruin my mojo like that? I was ready to fire. I wanted to talk about positive things on this episode, guys. But this one here, he has another agenda. What is your problem, Gogo? If this multitude of Nigerians are yearning and calling me to come and serve this great nation in the year 2023, after President Muhammad Buhari, I will say, yes, I am ready. Wow. <laughs> Jesus, he actually said that? You don't mean it. Sorry, my people. He actually, he, ah, hey, the devil is liar. <laughs> we have suffered. Ah, I'm telling you, we have suffered. <laughs> I know that Corridor World keeps interrupting. Don't worry, I will still talk about the positive things. But seriously, Yaya Bello wants to be president in 2023. The devil is liar. Kogi people, where you now day? That come to your lung. Please move closer. Exactly what are you cooking for his excellence? Kile Fungo Bina Yige. Your excellence, Mr. Governor, let me look here in case you are watching. I beg, no vex. Because I think that some people have been deceiving you in Kogi. This is like a miscommunication somewhere, you know? And I'm the only one that will tell you the truth, Mr. Governor. In fact, give me one moment. Let me ask the people one more time. Mela come to your lung. Who are this multitude that are yearning for Yaya Bello to be president? Please raise your hand wherever you are. We can't see you through the plasma TV. Nobody. nobody Nobody is racing. You're not even ah, not even you, but I look cool. You're not nobody's racing. You nobody is racing there. Your excellency, nobody. There's nobody that is here. <laughs> Nobody is yearning for you to be president. But yeah, yeah. You see, your excellency, in case you're watching, sir. Nobody. <laughs> you know why not uh, wait and complete your tenure as governor before you begin to uh, go for another major prize. The interest of the people of Kogi State supersede the interest of Governor Yahya Bello. No kidding, no kidding. Because that is not what we see so. The national interest supersede this interest of Kogi State as a unit, a unit of uh, in the federation. So this is about national interest. <laughs> It's like you are laying down your life, but I am, to serve the people. You are sacrificing yourself, you know, like the customs officer. Why didn't I get it? I sacrificed my life to go to do some to enter the bush where the bandits are. Thank you, Jerry, my father, Mr. Customs. The man is uh, sacrificing his life, going to see bandits on our behalf, and then they are friendly. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Serving the country, serving Nigeria in that greater capacity, Nigerians, Africa, and even black race, better. All right, that's it. I think I'm done. You know, let me bring myself back. This is your show now. I'm done. I'm done. The man wants to serve the black race. <laughs> 
Jesus, once again, your excellence, in case you are watching, I beg no vex, huh? But uh, this is just an innocent question. <laughs> Kogi people, hey, be roll on, hey, be roll on. what exactly are you feeding this man? And in fact, what is it that our politicians drink whenever elections get close? Even my father, are you a fire or she? Eh? Posted pictures of himself on Okada, like the rest of us regular people that take Okada. You know, he's taking Okada to airport. I have no problem with this at all. It's just that the only thing I don't understand is they only do this when elections are getting close. Just for us to know that they are human beings and that they can relate with regular people like the rest of us. In fact, even my father, the vice president, the man is now eating lunch with uh, school children. It's a very serious something. <laughs> it's a very serious something. And I cannot be no pastor in case you are watching. <laughs> I thought this was a noble thing to do as a vice president to go and eat with uh, school children. Th that was my first thought. But you, you need to see the comments. It's like Nigerians cannot be pleased. Ah, this is a very serious something. <laughs> you can see. Anyway, me, I give kudos to uh, Pastor Jared. But you know Nigerians, it's like you can never please them. They think that this whole thing has something to do with the coming election. I said, how bad Nigerians? Why is it so hard for somebody to please you guys? If the man is eating big dinner at Asodok, you will talk. Now the man is eating banana. Regular banana with student, you are still talking. What do you want the man to do? How will he please you? Pastor Mobi <laughs> Jesus. But why am I even bothering myself about all these people? I'm here to talk about something positive, like I said, that made me really, really excited. Please move closer, Jare. Ladies and gentlemen, the federal government of Nigeria would like to borrow $200 million to buy mosquito nets in the name of fighting malaria. No, no, that's not the good news. Of course, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's ridiculous. It gets to a point where things like this don't even move you anymore. But the good news is that the Senate said no. Amen, somebody. What? They didn't say no. They are just querying it. They are, what is there to query? I beg, no vex. All the sass and mass at the Senate. And I can tell you alone. Please, ju just say outright no. Don't we already have 450 million naira budgeted for malaria in the proposed 2022 appropriation bill? Ah, ah. Any people here bear roll on. Bear on in everything that we are doing. Let us be fairy God. They said no. They said out. They said outright no. The Nigerian Senate said no to the 200 million to buy mosquito nets. Oh. They must have been watching this show real time. Thank you so much to the Nigerian Senate. See, I knew this was going to be a good news. Thank you so much all to the Nigerian Senate for saying no. Ah, uh, 200 million dollars. Dollars. Sorry, Kenny. Efeder Rupokoni. Mosquito net. Ziko. Mosquito saw me. It's not, it's not only mosquito net. Eh? <laughs> it's not that hard to say no. We don't need 200 million dollars on mosquito net in Nigeria. I did a whole episode on how we can get rid of malaria completely in Nigeria, just like they did in the US. I've talked about this for years now. Nigerian senators, I beg, take a look at that video. <laughs> that is where we should be spending our money. That is where we should focus on. I will leave the link in the description below for you senators. Please make sure that you watch it. <laughs> Yes, you don't get malaria in America. Even if you are bitten by a mosquito, it doesn't translate into malaria. That is what we need in Nigeria. We need to be able to get rid of malaria once and for all. You guys not doing know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Okay, guys, please move closer because this is one of those I cannot believe it stories. I don't, I, even my brother does not believe it. So I heard that the federal government of Nigeria is now selling brass as... <laughs> Jesus, that didn't come out right. <laughs> what I meant to say is that the government is selling brass and waist trainers, you know, but not just any brass and waist trainers. So I'm telling you, these were the ones that our former petroleum minister, Desani Madweke, left behind when she left the country after allegedly stealing $2.5 billion. Dollars, not naira. I said, ah, but what is so special about Desani's bra? And I cannot be no anti Desani. Until I saw the photo of the bra, I said, Jesus, Jesus. Apparently, my mother has one one of the world's most expensive bras called Heavenly Star, which was made in 2001 by Victoria's Secret. The bra is made with 1,200 pink sapphires. And in the middle of the bra, right in the center, they have a 90 carat flawless emerald cut diamond. Do you know how much they sell the bra? $12.5 million. Jesus. He shock you. He shock. He shock even me. He shock me. Twelve point five million dollars. Story come. Ha, huh, Baba. Why? 
Why? Oh, no, 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 no. Some people are wicked. As in, in fact, there's level to this wickedness. Some people are just outright wicked. Wicked, you told your long. You spent 12.5 million dollars on loan, your own money. On bra. Ah, baba. I know that some people don't like when we talk about this woman. I don't even care what anybody says. Why does anybody need a 12 million dollar bra? Why? Just explain. Maybe you can enlighten me. How much is that in Naira? Like 5.1 billion. I know it might not be up to that when she bought it in Naira because Naira has crashed. But it is 5.1 billion Naira right now. 5.1 billion Naira. Lori, come. Eh? Just to hold your titties together. How about mommy? Eh, they were long. Ah, let me look at you in case you are watching. My mother. Kilo little bear. Eh? The woman is like 60 years old. No, no, so at what age are you doing all this? Serene? The diamond at the center of the bra alone is worth 10 million dollars. In fact, she definitely had access to a lot of money for her to spend millions of dollars on one bra. Ayele, ayele, you think you know people and then you know people. And I'm very sure she's just trying to make a statement. I don't know to who. I saw another of her bra and that one is laced with gold. Thank you very much. You know, the government also said that they recovered 125 wedding gowns from her house. I said, Auntie, please, why do you have 125 wedding gowns inside your house? Saint Annie, are you now selling wedding gowns? I mean, there's nothing impossible. What cannot happen in Nigeria does not exist. Maybe the woman is selling wedding gowns to all these uh, elites, all these big, big people. Ah, your daughter is getting married. I have some dresses in my house. Tell her to come and visit. Can you imagine? Auntie, why? They also listed 13 small gowns, 41 waist trainers. That is the one that still baffles me. <laughs> Jesus, why? What, what is one person doing with 41 waist trainers? Even if they are cheap, why do you need 41, auntie? 73 hard flowers, 11 suits, 11 invisible bras. <laughs> Go. 73 veils, 30 braziers. The braziers are different from the brass, by the way. <laughs> Two standing fans, 17 magic skirts. It's just that is what they are called magic skirt. Six blankets, one table blanket, and 64 pairs of shoes. I was like, Okay. Why should one person need 64 pairs of shoes? Please enlighten me. And I'm very sure that she has more because she left Nigeria in 2015. Obviously. So she must have been wearing shoes all these years. So the 64 is just extra. And then, of course, they listed her Banana Island properties, the foreshore estates in Nikoi, including 18 flats and six penthouses. The federal government has begun the process of screening 613 independent valuers who are expected to manage the sale of the asset permanently forfeited. Hopefully they will let us know whoever buys mommy's bra. <laughs> Let us know. I said just this bra alone, just one bra alone can build one world class hospital. It may not be big, but it also depends on location because if you spend $12.5 million on a hospital in my village, ah, it will be world class. It will be big. It will be big. So how one person can put all that on her chest and walk around baffles me. Some people are wicked. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <music> Moving on to Congo, guys. This is actually a very sad story. Around sometime in the night of October 4th, a makeshift boat full of people went missing and failed to report or arrive at any future destination. And when the police launched a search for the boat, they came across the shipwreck in the Congo River and they tried to start rescuing as many people as they could. According to a spokesman for the governor of the northwestern province of Mongala, Nestor Magbado, 51 bodies have been recovered and almost 70 are believed to be missing. Yeah, it's so, so sad. You know, unfortunately, it appears that the majority of the passengers have died due to exposure and injuries from the wreck itself. A lot of them were injured when the boat capsized and some of them actually died from that. Over 60 people have lost their lives so far and dozens more are still missing while the police have confirmed that around 30 people were rescued successfully. This is just heartbreaking and unfortunately, shipwrecks and resulting fatalities are not uncommon in the Congo River system. You know, in the last one year in Congo, over 1,000 people have gone missing and over 200 of them have been confirmed dead from boat-related accidents in just the last one year in the Congo. As a matter of fact, the Congo is widely considered as either one of the most deadly or the most deadly river system in the world due to its turbulent waters, massive waterfalls, and dangerous animals. I mean, guys, there's a part of the river literally called the 
gates of hell. Mm -hmm. It's also the deepest river in the world, with some parts of the river being as deep as 800 feet deep, which means that it's so deep that light cannot penetrate. Our heart goes out, of course, to the families and the victims of this latest accident. I hope that they find peace. It's heartbreaking. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> Moving on to Ethiopia, the Ethiopian forces have committed airstrikes against the capital of Tigray, that is Mekele, where it was reported by the UN that three children were killed and several others were wounded. Now, only a few days afterwards, eight more airstrikes have been carried out by the Ethiopian government against the Tigray, targeting a training facility and numerous other targets that were not disclosed. There were also some reports that a school was hit by the airstrike. Now, what's very interesting is that the Ethiopian government actually denied doing this. And then some hours after the UN has started reporting it, they admitted that, okay, yeah, this was us. Sorry, this happened. Like, what the heck is going on in Ethiopia? Bodies are being dumped in rivers. We've talked about that. Airstrikes killing children, seriously? And they're also using rape as weapon of war. It's overwhelming at times, especially as we keep seeing different opinions in the comment section whenever we talk about what's happening in Ethiopia. In fact, some Ethiopians are justifying what's happening. Our heart goes out to the victims of the airstrike. We'll keep you guys posted on what's happening in Ethiopia. In the meantime, maybe Ethiopians can shed a light on what exactly is going on. You guys might not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> Moving on to Zambia, guys. I know we don't talk about Zambia a lot, but today we have a wonderful reason to talk about Zambia. Ladies and gentlemen, it is their Independence Day. Actually, we're a little bit late. Ha <laughs> ha! But we'll still celebrate anyway. Happy Independence Day to my Zambian people. This is a very special independence celebration considering the fact that just August of this year, they elected a new president and that is Hekende Hichelema. Hichelema is very popular for being able to make a connection with Zambians youth and having them actually turn up to vote when it came time to do so. He ran on the promise to lower unemployment rate in the country, as well as turn Zambia into the food basket of that region. He wants to push Zambia closer to democracy and to get rid of dictatorship views. So congratulations to Zambia for electing a new president. And at the end of this show, we'll be showing you guys the sight and sound of Zambia. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just giving it real. <music> Moving on to Sudan, my people, you may have heard that a coup has taken place in Sudan. Sudan's top general Abdel Fattah al-Burhan has blamed political infighting as the reason for the takeover and has promised a transition to civilian rule with elections planned for July 2023. But Sudan's civilian remained unconvinced and protested through Monday night. Yes, indeed. So, it started over the weekend. The military of Sudan took control of the government and they dissolved the ruling seats. In case you don't remember, Sudan is not controlled by a president or a prime minister. Rather, it's been controlled by a coalition of various party leaders since they got rid of their former president, that is Umar Bashar, in 2019 after a massive protest. I mean, we were all very hopeful for Sudan at that time. You guys remember how regular people led the protest? Women were in the forefront. Front. The pictures went viral. The videos went viral. So you might be wondering what exactly happened to lead us to this point in time in Sudan. Well, the details are a bit hazy at this point, but here is what we know so far. Number one, the ruling seats of the Sudanese government wanted to transition it to a fully civilian rule, which is great, right? This would effectively mean that politicians would no longer be elite, and hypothetically, whoever becomes the president would always be elected by the people. Now, the military leaders attributed to the followers of the previous Sudanese leader, that is Bashar, did not want this to happen, and so a coup ensued. They didn't want a democratic government. Now you might be wondering why would they want to overturn such a fair deal? Well, you're not the only one wondering that. The protest seems to be split almost down the middle, with some people saying that the 2019 transition to civilian rule needs to be upheld while others are supporting the military. It's really getting messy actually. Around seven people have reportedly been killed so far in the continuing protest and 140 people have been injured by the military. So right now it's a little difficult to say what exactly would be the outcome of the coup with so so many people upset that it happened. But with the military supporting only one side, this could be, you know, another case of military seizing power, claiming that it's temporary and then before long we have another dictator. So let me know what you guys think about what's happening in Sudan. They've had a dictator for so long, people got tired of the dictator and now the military is taking over. Let me know what you guys think about this. You guys not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> So before I sign
find out. Someone had reached out to me asking how it's possible for the Haven Estate that Grace of Ray is selling, how it's possible for it to have appreciated by 2% just within two months. So I called her, I said, can you explain this? And she said to me that it's because Chevron is now building an estate near Grace of Ray's properties. And they are not just building their estate, they are trying to develop that area as their way of giving back. So Chevron is now tiring the roads in that neighborhood. They are constructing all kinds of roads in that neighborhood. So now they have better roads leading to this neighborhood. And you know, as Chevron is building their estate, they will also build other things that they would need. I heard that Chevron normally will sell to their staff members and then their staff members will now resell them. So Chevron is building an estate there. That's why the prices of all the properties in that neighborhood have gone up, including that of Grace Ofure. So if you bought it two months ago, you can resell today. Today, you're getting 30% return. Your property has gained 30% return on it. And if you are still thinking about buying it, please think very well. But please don't think beyond Monday because starting on Monday... <laughs> the last day because Monday is the last day that you can buy the Haven estate. She said that starting on Tuesday that she wants to hold on to the rest of the land because it will appreciate more and she will make more money when she sells. So I said to her, I said, Auntie Grace, have the fear of God. Bear well on. I said, <laughs> make sure that tell to anybody that comes from me, at least until Monday, let them buy. And so this is the price. If you are still interested, it will only go up. If you are thinking about it, at least make some down payment. If tomorrow you want to decide you are no longer interested you can you can do that <laughs> But at least pull down something and then you can balance up over a period of six months. She's doing payment in installments. But make sure that, like I said in the last episode, whatever you do, have some land, have some kind of property to your name. Those who bought it two months ago, they've made 30% in return. So if any of you that bought two months ago would like to sell, by the way, Grace would like to buy from you <laughs> because she wants to hold on to. I said, ah, Auntie Grace, you are wicked. <laughs> but no, 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 she's not a wicked somebody. She's a very nice somebody. She's opening it up till Monday. So the last day that you can buy the heavy property is Monday the 1st of November. Please do not say that I did not say because I'm very sure in a year's time I will come back and tell you how much it is. That is my baby crying. Alright y'all, it's been real and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and if you're yet to subscribe to my channel, I'm watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. Until next time I'm going to see you later. Peace out.